So far in this video series, we've talked a lot about what causes stress and the effects that stress can have on you and your family. So in this video, I want to talk through five ways to reduce stress in your life. And of course, we've all been in stressful situations, stressful situations, both good and bad every day. But when you put the plan of action that I'm going to talk about in this video into place, you'll find you'll be able to reduce your stress quite considerably. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is identify what's making you stressed in the first place. Is there something that you can do differently to avoid the stress? Can you eliminate it? And if you can't eliminate it, can you manage it? And a good way to find out what's making you stressed is to keep a stress journal. Every time you find yourself in a stressful situation, you want to make a note of it. And if these things keep cropping up on a regular basis, then you're going to notice a pattern and then you can think about how you're going to deal with it. Because once you've identified a problem, you're halfway to finding a solution. Another way to reduce stress is to get physical. Bear in mind that we're dealing with the fight or flight response that our bodies have. So we're going to have all this extra energy, all this extra adrenaline. So one way to get rid of it is to get physical. So take your dog for a walk if you have a dog. Walk, cycle or take public transport rather than drive your car. Use the stairs at work or the mall rather than an elevator or an escalator. And you can park your car in the farthest spot in the parking lot and then walk the rest of the way. All of this is going to burn up this energy that your body is creating for the fight or flight response. You're going to be burning it up in a good way rather than internalizing it and causing stress. Then you want to eliminate the unnecessary so that you're not having all sorts of different stimuli coming at you from all sorts of different directions and you're not having all sorts of different demands made on your time. So you want to cut down on your commitments. If you find that there aren't simply enough hours in the day to do everything comfortably, you want to decide what's important and keep them and you want to decide what's not important and drop it. And you want to unsubscribe from email lists. You want to make sure that you avoid distractions and lots of different email lists can be very distracting. So if you find that you're not really reading someone's emails or you're finding that they're taking up too much time and they're taking time away from things that are more important, then unsubscribe from that email list and get rid of that distraction. You can also combine lots of short journeys or lots of errands into one longer task. So if you need to go to the bank and you need to go to the supermarket and you need to go to the post office, instead of doing three separate journeys, do it all in one go and get it all over with in one go. And then you're reducing the amount of stress because you know, the, the fact that you're having one large amount of stress is actually sometimes better for you than lots of little amounts of stress um, on an ongoing basis. So the fact that you're sort of getting it all over and done with in one go can help to eliminate a lot of stress. The other thing is to avoid people you find stressful. I know in some situations this is easier said than done if you've got a very difficult person that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. If it's your boss, well, you're probably not going to be able to avoid him or her. But if it's somebody else that you're finding very stressful, you can simply cut them out or you can communicate with them via email rather than face-to-face, -face, especially if you always end up arguing with them. Then that's a good way to uh, avoid getting into conflict because you know it, it it's hard to start an argument by email because you have to put some thought into it you're not going to sort of fly off the handle so that's a good way of doing it but avoiding people that you find stressful uh, can cut down on your stress considerably and finally simplify your life 
look at things that are unnecessary, look at things that you can really do without and do without them. Because if they're making you stressed, then they really are serving no useful purpose whatsoever. You should also eat healthily because you want to make sure that your body is getting enough nutrition because that can help cut down on stress. So eliminate junk food is the first thing to do. Eat proper regular meals whenever you possibly can because having a balanced diet uh, making sure that your body gets a balanced diet, a balanced intake of vitamins and the right amount of nutrients can uh, help to cut down on stress and it can help your body to deal with stress in a more efficient way. So you should also cut down on sugar and caffeine because they're both stimulants and when you are trying to reduce stress you don't want stimulants, you want to uh, keep things as calm as possible. And you should also avoid alcohol, cigarettes and drugs. Although they can have a temporary effect in calming you down, the problem is, of course, you then open up another cold can of worms because alcohol, cigarettes and drugs also have their own inbuilt health problems. So you might be trading one problem, stress, for another problem that's related to alcohol, cigarettes or drugs. And finally... You want to think positive. You know, eliminating negative thoughts does help to reduce stress. If you, like the old song says, always look on the bright side of life. If you look for the positive in situations, then that's going to cut down on the stress because you're not going to be having this constant negativity hammering at you all the time, which can be very, very stressful. And of course, it helps to develop a good sense of humour. See the funny side in every situation. And that can help to reduce the stress because it helps to reduce the fear. And fear is a big motivator, a big part of the fight or flight response. In this final video of the series, I'll bring everything together and recap on what we've covered so far.